Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, hopefully, everyone is uh, doing uh, well today. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the effect of the shrinkage mitigating materials uh, on shrinkage reduction of uh, in concrete bridge decks. More specifically, I would like to talk about uh, the interaction and the synergy between the shrinkage mitigating materials. This is part of my PhD work I did a few years ago in Missouri SNT uh, with, uh, with Professor Kamal Kayat. My name is Iman Medipur, uh, former PhD student in Missouri SNT and currently a VP technology and engineering at Carbon Build, a startup company that we developed from the work that we developed uh, at UCLA. Okay, there we go. So the, the objective is very the objective is very straightforward. Shrinkage reduction, shrinkage and LDH shrinkage cracking of concrete pavement and concrete bridge decks, which can cause uh, which can deteriorate faster and it can cause the, uh, it can cause deterioration of the concrete faster, and this can uh, reduce and shorten the, the service life of the concrete. Of course, the vast majority of concrete pavements and the bridge deck, they perform well, but we should believe that there are some that they fail prematurely. And what I mean with prematurely here is like, the service life is like 10 to 20 years. And after that, they, it's associated with the with substantial repair, repair costs of around like $1 million per mile. To give you some sense about, uh, about this issue, it, for example, in 2003, uh, a survey uh, taken by DOT for LDH cracking of the bridge decks, they actually identified 75% cracking is due is because of the uh, drying shrinkage that happened at LDH of, uh, of, the, of the bridge deck. Of course, one of the challenge here for, for the bridge deck, we, we typically use high performance concrete. And of course, high performance concrete is good. It's, uh, it offers a good durability, uh, but of course, this because because of the high because of the low water to binder ratio, which is typically around, around 0.4, and also the high the blended binder content. Uh, sometimes silica film, sometimes slag, uh, slag cement, sometimes fly ash with cement. Uh, the, the combination of this factor they could potentially contribute to the higher risk of the LDH cracking of the, of the concrete. In this study, uh, the, the, the shrinkage mitigating materials we evaluate, I evaluated is was a calcium sulfur aluminate based expansive agent, the calcium oxide based expansive agents, shrinkage reducing admixtures, and expanded clay light with sand. And uh, one thing I also evaluated in this study was the initial most curing duration from between zero to six day to determine the sensitivity, sensitivity of these expansive agents to the most curing period. Of course, all the work uh, were, con uh, were performed on was performed on uh, concrete equivalent motors, and at the fixed water to binder ratio of 0.4, which is typically used for concrete bridge deck. Some some points regarding the expansion mechanism of these expansive materials. Of course, for calcium sulfur aluminate based the expansion, is all depends on the etzinger formation, as you can see here in this equation, is highly water dependent, and it requires a lot of water for the complete hydration. And to give you some sense about the numbers, for example, the, the calcium sulfur aluminate base, it requires like 0.8 uh, water to water to water to uh, bind water to cement ratio to complete this hydration. For calcium oxide base, the mechanism is associated with the with the calcium hydroxide formation. So basically the quick lime or uh, the free lime in this expansive expansive region uh, reacts with water and it forms the calcium hydroxide and it uh, it contributes to around like 90% volume increase because of this reaction. Going to some results before before discussing the results, uh, we I used the embedded strain gauges to evaluate to monitor the LH uh, autogenous deformation. Uh, compared to ASTM C698, which at, uh, in this one of the flows of this sta ASTM standard is to, is to start the uh, start the autogenous rating or deformation monitoring after final setting, but this is not really uh, favorable for the once you once the mixture is modified with expansive with expansive agents. Some of the high level results is if you look at if you compare these two plots uh, with the semi scales, of course the calcium oxide expansive agents. Uh, they offer a significantly higher, uh, faster, and greater expans expansive magnitude compared to compared to the calcium sulfur aluminate based expansive expansive agents. And then the other point I would like to highlight there is a synergistic effect once the expansive agents is used in combination with either light with sand or shrinkage reducing admixtures. And I'm, I, I I I I talk about this 
later, what will be the mechanism behind this that they can contribute to higher expansion? Going to the drying deformation, uh, one thing I observe here that the, the expansion mechanism of course of all of these expansive agents is significantly affected by the by the external moist skewing. Basically, if you just look at the, the middle plot here, uh, if you just compare, uh, for example, once the mixture is modified with the calcium sulfur aluminate base with CSA admixture uh, expansive agent, the, in the absence of any 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 initial moist skewing period. The, the, the shrinkage profile is pretty much similar to once you have just plain cement, plain cement mixture. That means we are not fully activating the hydration and the expansion mechanism of this calcium sulfoluminate based exp uh, expansive materials. And also from this contouring, the left side, you see how the, how, the how the shrinkage magnitude and the expansion magnitude actually varies as a function of the initial moist curing. With that being said, the initial, I mean, the initial moist curing or the proper initial moist curing is very substantial, is critically, is very critical for, for the expansive materials. The other point I would like to highlight here is once we have, uh, once in the absence of any initial moist curing period, the use of lightweight sand or SRW also, it, they can contribute to the expansion of these uh, CSA uh, expansive agents. So we can actually activate this material further and then we can to benefit of the expansion uh, and the lower shrinkage of, of these uh, this, uh, expansive add additives. A quick, a quick look at the like the hydration mechanism here. So we measure, I measured the internal dehumidity uh, of the concrete with, with chemical with, with different modified with different uh, expansive agents to determine what would be the reason uh, of having higher expansion or higher hydration of calcium sulfoaminate in the presence of SRW or lightweight sand. Of course, unsurprisingly, lightweight sand can provide the internal curing and the water the, the, the water supplied by the lightweight sand can contribute to the uh, 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 can enhance the hydration of the of the CSA cement, and that's why we can see some some etringer formation in the absence of any initial moisture. The same reason in the different. Uh, I mean, a different uh, reason would be for SRW. SRW actually delays the cement hydration, and that's why it contributes to the. It can maintain the degree of saturation of the concrete for the longer for the longer period. So the water consumption would be lower inside the concrete, and that's why the, the because of the higher availability of water, we can have the better activation of this CSA uh, hydration, and of course more more etching gas formation. Of course, all of these uh, results can be translated to the strength evolution and the moisture strut densification. Again, in the absence of any initial moist curing, the, the strength of the, of, the, of, the, of the mixture modified with CSA is very similar to the, to the just OPC. But once the initial moist curing is actually applied, then we can actually have a faster strength and also the higher strength uh, of, this, of, this, of this admixture. Another point here is the use of lightweight sand. Of course, lightweight sand, uh, unsurprisingly, can densify the, the matrix because of this internal internal curing process. As you can see here in these STM images, the, the cement paste the paste matrix here is is darker, and that could be an indication of the the, uh, the lower unhydrated cement phases uh, around the ITC. We did, uh, I did some uh, larger scale experiments to basically expand and extend this no, uh, the, all the learnings uh, from the material side to the larger scale uh, side. Uh, we, uh, I cast some concrete uh, for some slabs with this, uh, with this dimension. There are full, the, all the slabs were fully instrumented for shrinkage deformation and for strain, for relative humidity and also for, for the temperature at different heights across the, uh, across the slab uh, at different heights. Some results compared to the DOT, DOT reference mixture, which is only which has only 25% cement. One thing I would like to highlight here is you can see the significant variation of the shrinkage deformation from the top from the top part of the of the slabs to the middle and to the bottom. Of course, top top because of the faster water evaporation, the shrinkage tendency is higher. That's why we see the larger shrinkage magnitude. Uh, and once we introduce expansive agents, 7.5% uh, calcium oxide base, you can see we, we observe a significant expansion. And even after 200, 200 days, uh, that, that expansion uh, didn't, 
didn't turn into uh, to the shrinkage even after 200 days for both top and bottom. And the other point is here, we see less variation from top to bottom of the slabs when they are uh, modified with uh, expansive, expansive Asian materials. One thing I would like to just touch it here, as, as already Eric mentioned, is, is the, another, I would call it as a, like a side benefit here. Of course, we use expansive, expansive additives like to control the shrink, to reduce shrinkage and induce, introduce expansion. But of course, as a, as, a, as a side point, as a side benefit of this, as long as the concrete uh, is fully restrained, then the expansion uh, induced by this material can actually cause pre-stressing conditions the compressive strength inside of the concrete and also, of course, inside of the river. We did some, I did some testing on these concrete beams and we observed that the crack, deforma the crack formation and also the, 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 the toughness, the ductility actually enhances by using, by using the uh, expansive material. And again, one, uh, we need to make sure the system is fully restrained. Because if, this, if, if you have free expansion, then that doesn't necessarily contribute to the, the chemically pre-stressing condition inside the concrete. So as long as the system is fully restrained, then this, this expansion can cause uh, compressive strains in the concrete, in concrete and also in the rebar. And that's why we have some kind of like the pre-stressing, uh, chemically pre-stressing condition that they can contribute to the enhanced mechanical performance. With that being said, I would like to conclude my talk and I would like to highlight some important points here. Uh, once we use uh, the, the additive admixtures like calcium oxide based for CS, CSA uh, admixture, additive admixtures, we need to be more we need we need to be more careful about the mixture design, about the water to binder ratio, and also about the initial moss curing to, to make sure that we can fully activate the expansion of this material and we can hydrate this material at the LDH because otherwise. If the material, if CSA doesn't, for example, uh, doesn't hide it at LDH, it can cause the secondary etching dot formation sometime later and it can increase the risk of the cracking at the, at the later ages. The same for calcium oxide base, because it has a higher expansion potential, that uh, the optimal dosage should be, should be determined, should be identified for every mixture design. And lastly, the synergistic effect of using lightweight sand in the, uh, with expansive material, with expansive agents it can significantly enhance the performance of these of this, uh, of this expansive additives. And uh, of course, uh, if, if, you, if you are looking for more information in this area, you can, you can always refer to our publications uh, that we developed from, from this work. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, very fascinating work. I look forward to reading your dissertation at some point. <laughs>